I've spent 10,000 hours making this scarf, but I know it'll look cool, so it'll be worth it. It reminds me. Hey, boy graders! Oh my gosh! I was just making this cool scarf for me to wear. Um, welcome back. My name is Mrs. Lawson. That actually reminds me of what we're reading today because some of them make some of their own clothing too, um, but they like weave it, but it's kind of like knitting. Super cool. Uh, welcome back. Lesson 15. We are reading pages 40 through 45. Let me put my knitting away real quick and we'll get started. All right, let's get started. Our learning intention for today, we are learning how to identify and use key details to help explain what we are reading. We know we are successful when we can identify the key details in the text, two, refer back to details when answering questions, and three, explain what happens in a historical text because this is real life, it happened in history. We are gonna go and work on Latin roots first. So we are describing a structure. And to do this, we need to use one of these bases. What's the correct base word? Yeah, it'd be struct, right, to build. So if it's structure, it is maybe a building or something that has been built already. It's an object. So, we know that that's what a structure is. So today you're gonna to be reading the story following the doctor's orders. So let's get a little sneak peek about what this story's about. It had been raining every day since we left for vacation. My sister Emma and I had been going a little crazy being stuck inside. This particular morning had started with a quarrel among who had lost my shoes. So they're on vacation, and I can't wait to, for you guys to see what happens. Who vocabulary, Miss Lawson's favorite. You know it, so try and sound out this word. Great job, guys. It's dominated. Dominated. From the story, clans dominated village life. These were large family groups headed by women. And so something from today, Michael Jordan dominated in basketball. So what would dominated mean? Yeah, it means they control it. They have a commanding influence. They're a big part of it. Now, adobe brick. This is what those buildings were made out of in the last section we read together. And adobe brick is a small building block made of sand, clay, water, and sometimes plant matter left to dry in the sun. So here's like a close-up of somebody making it, and then back to those buildings, that's why they looked the way that they did, is because they were made of adobe brick. So let's go back to reading about the Pueblo people today. Let me get my arrow, and we'll get started. Family life. Clans dominated village life. These were large family groups that were headed by women. Women also owned the property in Pueblo society. The clans took their names from nature, Eagle Clan, Corn Clan, and so on. A man married into his wife's clan. Children were born into their mother's clan. Boys and girls had different jobs that prepared them for adult life. The boys learned to hunt and irrigate crops. They learned to plant and raise the crops as well. They also were taught how to weave clothes. Girls were taught how to cook, grind corn, preserve food by drying it, and make pottery. Go ahead and go to the next page. Oh wow, we've got some making pottery. Oh, and look, they're doing those designs. That's awesome. All right, many Pueblo people continue to practice their old religion. Every Pueblo village has at least two kivas, kivas, 
So, you know, even as a grown up, sometimes we don't know all the words. So make sure that you're looking it up and knowing for sure how to say words. So I'm going to pause for a second. I'm going to make sure I'm saying it correctly. Okay, so it is a kiva. A kiva is an underground room that is used for religious ceremonies. The Pueblos built their homes of adobe brick and stone. Like their ancestors, they mix sand, clay, and water together in rectangular blocks. These dry and become very hard. The adobes are the basis of their buildings. Often their homes were built one on top of another. The floor above was set back so that the top of one room was like the patio for the next level up. So we said it was a kiva, kivas. The underground chambers called kivas were sometimes as large as 100 feet across. The kiva included a fire pit and a sipapu. A sipapu was a small hole in the ground symbolizing the opening through which ancient ancestors first came into the world, according to legend. Most of the time, only men went into the kivas through a hole in the roof. In some ceremonies, kachinas, friendly spirits, were honored. This is true for Zuni and Hopi ceremonies today, as it was long ago. The kachinas may be spirits of people, animals, or even plants. In the ceremonies, men may dress as kachinas and come up out of the kivas to dance. No windows were used on the ground level. The only way into the apartments was through a hole in the roof. The people climbed ladders to get to their homes. When the ladders were pulled up, they could not be attacked. Wow, that's kind of interesting. So how did Pueblo people use natural resources, including the land, to build strong, safe villages? What do you guys think? So let's look back at the last page to see if we can figure this out together. It says right here, like their ancestors, the, they mix sand, clay, and water together. These dry and become very strong. So they're using the resources that they have that nature gives them. That's why they're called natural resources. So they're using those to build their houses. And like it says right here, they're very hard. So it's gonna hold up really well strong safe villages and on top of that like we just read they have these ladders so they built their stuff on top of the land and so they can take the ladders away and people can't attack them and get inside unless they want them there so that makes them safe because they can take the ladders away and people can't get inside pretty cool and this is what they look like in real life we've got the ladders and the brick contact with spaniards Spanish explorers arrive in what is now New Mexico in 1540. They had a battle with a Zuni village where they stole some food. Some of the things the Spanish brought were useful. The Pueblos made use of metal and domestic animals such as horses, sheep, and chickens. The wheat, grapes, and other fruit the Spaniards planted were welcome. But the Spanish also brought European diseases. These diseases killed most of the inhabitants of many Pueblo communities. Many of the survivors were forced to abandon their villages. Missionaries arrived with the Spanish. They demanded that the Pueblo stop practicing their own religion. Some of the Spanish wanted to make slaves of the Pueblo. In 1680, the Pueblo people rebelled they were able to drive the Spanish back to Mexico. This was one of the few real victories for many Native, Nation, Native Americans. No Europeans returned until 1962, 1692. The Pueblo people have a long and proud history. They have faced many challenges, but they continue to draw strength from their traditions and rich culture. They are a thriving community in the 21st century. So here's some of their art. Many weave cloths, cloth in many patterns. Oh my gosh. 
Miss Lawson can't read very well right now. Men weave cloth in many patterns. Down here it says, Kachina dolls look like the Kachinas of religious ceremonies. Pueblo pottery is made by the women. Oh, and here's our glossary. So if there were any words you didn't know while you were reading in the book, we know that the glossary is all the way in the back. Right here, like the last page. And then the page after that is the index to where if you wanted to look up something specific, you knew where to look. So if I asked you, um, hey, I want to know more about the Nakoda tribe, where would I look? We go look at page 23, 30, and 31, right? Good job. So now let's look back, figure out what were the roles of the men versus the women? How were their roles different? So let's look back. All right. So it says here, let's look back at the very beginning. Clans dominated the life. There were large family groups that were headed by women. So the women were the head of the family. They were the boss. Women also owned the property. The clans took their name from nature. A man married into a wife's clan. So that was what happened. And then down here it said, boys and girls have different jobs that prepared them for adult life. The boys learned to hunt and work with crops and plant and raise the crops as well. They also were taught how to weave cloth. Girls were taught how to cook, grind corn, preserve food by drying it and make property. So right there, we have a, we've learned a lot about girls versus boys and what they do. So we know the men, they marry into the women's clan. That's what they do, they marry into their family. We also learned that they're the ones that hunt for food. What else are they in charge of? What was that other job? Yep, they irrigate, plant, and raise crops. And then there's one more thing it said that they do. They wove the cloth or the clothes, right? So there's the men and what they do. Now, what about the women? Because they talked about the women a lot. We know that they ruled over the families. We also know that they owned the property. They were in charge. The last thing we know is that they made the pottery. They said that too. So there's one of the main ideas of this section was the difference between what do the men do and what do the women do? Now, one more question before you get to your reading response. What details explain that when cultures meet, that effects can be helpful, they can be good, and they can be harmful? So let's go back to when the Spaniards get there and see what happens right here. So what good things did the Spaniards do and what bad things did they do? I'm going to pause the video and see if you can figure it out. You know, when I paused the video, I reread through it to help Miss Lawson, you know, figure out what she thought. And what I found was right here, some of the things the Spanish brought were useful. So there's some good things that they brought. The Pueblos made use of metal and domestic animals such as horses, sheep, and chickens. So they used their animals, so that's one good thing. The wheat, grapes, and other fruit the Spaniards planted were welcome. They also brought them more crops, more options. But here's the bad thing. So we have two good things, but here's the bad thing. They brought what with them too? This happened to the other people we learned about. They brought diseases that killed most of the inhabitants of the community, guys. It killed a ton of their people. That's crazy. And it forced them many of the survivors to leave because they couldn't survive. They lost so many people. So sad. All right, for your reading response today, according to the text and pictures today, what traditions do modern Pueblo people follow? So I've included some pictures and some um, of the pages from the text so you can look back and figure out what do they still do um, to honor those traditions that they did in the past. Have a great rest of your day, fourth graders. Bye.